Pictograph alphabet A, B, C. Alphabet A looks very sharp. Let's start. Alphabet A, sharp series. Look at the apex of the alphabet A. It looks very sharp like a thorn. When you touch it, you feel a sharp pain and scream out, ouch. If you are Korean, you will scream out, Aia. Volca root number one. Latin root ache means sharp. Here under, you will study various words containing Latin root ache. Ache. Acute. Acacia. Acupuncture. Coelacanth. Pyracanth. Acumen. Acme. Acer. Look at the pointed peak of the alphabet A. When you touch it, you will feel a sharp ache and scream out, ouch. From now, let's start a journey of building your vocabulary. Voca root number one. Continued. Latin root ache means sharp. Here under, you will study various words containing Latin root ache. Acrid. Acetic. Acerbic. Exasperate. Exacerbate. Argument. Acerbate. Acne. Acid. Look at the pointed peak of the alphabet A. When you touch it, you will feel a sharp ache and scream out, ouch. From now, let's start a journey of building your vocabulary. Vocabulary number one. Acacia. Acacia has a sharp thorn. But its flower is white and very fragrant. Etymology. Acacia. Latin root ache means sharp. There are many words containing this root such as ache, acute, acumen, acupuncture, acanthus, pyracanth, acme, etc. Look at the sharp thorns of acacia trees. They are very sharp, but its white flower is very fragrant. An acacia is a shrub or tree that grows in warm regions and that has white or yellow flowers, very fragrant. Bees like them very much. They make an acacia honey which is also very fragrant and delicious. But please take care when you pick it off because it has a sharp thorn on its stem. Which scream will come out from your mouth when you are pricked by a thorn of acacia tree? If you are Korean, you scream, Aia. Aia. If you are American, you scream, Ouch. If you are German, you scream. Aia. If you are Spanish, you scream. Ayau. If you are Italian, you scream. Ai. If you are Ukrainian, you scream. Oi. If you are French, you scream. Ai. If you are Greek, you scream. Oh. If you are Swedish, you scream. Ai. If you are Nepalese, you scream. Yeah. If you are Chinese, you scream. Ayo. Ayo. If you are Japanese, you scream. Aita. Look at the sharp thorn of an acacia tree. It looks like the alphabet A. When you touch it, you will feel a sharp pain, maybe bleeding. Look at the alphabet A. It looks like an alp. The A-shaped, white peak of the Alps, shown in the picture below, is called Matterhorn, because it looks like a horn. Matterhorn is located on the Swiss-Italian border. The altitude above sea level of Matterhorn is 4,478 meters. The highest peak of a mountain is called, Apex. 
The apex of Matterhorn looks like a thorn to my eyes. If you touch it by hand, you will scream out, ouch. Vocabulary number two. Ache. Ache means continuous or prolonged dull pain in a part of one's body. When you feel ached in your back, you have a backache. Etymology. Ache. Ache is derived from Latin root ache meaning sharp and, or from Greek root agos meaning pain. There are many related words containing this root such as acacia, acute, acumen, acupuncture, acanthus, pyracanth, acme, acne, etc. An ache is a pain that is not sharp but continues for a long time. It is often used in combination with parts of the body. For example, when you feel a slight pain in your head, you has a headache. If in your tooth, a toothache, and in your heart, a heartache. When you feel a slight pain in your stomach, you has a stomachache. If you have a pain in your back, a backache, and in your belly, a bellyache. Look at the alphabet A. It looks like a cone. Both alphabet A and cone look like a thorn. They are very sharp. When you touch the peak of them, you will feel sharp pain. To my eyes, a cone looks similar to a horn. Seemingly, a cone looks similar to a corn or acorn. A foot corn looks like a tiny corn kernel. Generally, a foot corn is called wart, but properly speaking, they are different. Warts versus corns. What's the difference? Warts are caused by virus, and foot corns develop from the skin's reaction to friction and pressure. If you watch a foot corn or wart through a microscope, they looks like an ice cream cone. Etymologically, the two words corn and horn have a same root. You can prove it with the word unicorn. A unicorn is an imaginary animal that looks like a horse, and has a straight horn, growing from the middle of its forehead. Literally, a unicorn means a one-horned animal. Latin root uni means one, and cornus horn. Doesn't a horn look similar to a thorn? Horn, cone, thorn, corn, these four all have a pointed head like the alphabet A. Horn. Thorn. Cone. Matterhorn. Ice cream cone. Pine cone. Kokai corn. Corn. Corn kernel. Acorn. Corner. And finally, unicorn. But the corn in the last part of the word unicorn doesn't mean something like grain corn. It means a horn. All these things look like the alphabet A. When you touch the peak of them, you will feel sharp pain. What is the difference between pain, ache and hurt? Many students often find these three English words very confusing. So here we're talking about hurt, pain, and ache. First of all, ache is something internal. Meanwhile pain is something external. Ache is a persistent physical discomfort, generally dull like a toothache. But, pain may relatively come on quickly, and it is not easy to ignore. Though pain and ache is a noun, hurt is a verb. Hurt is to feel pain, to accidentally cause pain or injury. Its pain can be emotional as well as physical. Vocabulary number three. Acupuncture. Acupuncture means a form of complementary medicine in which fine needles are inserted in the skin. Etymology. Acupuncture. Latin root ache means sharp, and Latin root pungier means to prick. There are many related words containing Latin root ache, such as acacia, acute, acumen, 
acupressure, acanthus, pyracanth, coelacanth, acme, etc. An acupuncture is a method of relieving pain or curing illness by placing needles into a person's skin at particular points on the body. The word acupuncture consists of Latin acus, meaning needle, and Latin root punctura, meaning to puncture, make a hole, perforate. So, literally the word acupuncture means to prick with a needle. Acupuncture is an example of an alternative medical treatment. The word alternative as an adjective is defined as something that doesn't conform to existing or mainstream standards. Alternative medicine means a variety of therapeutic or preventive health care practices that do not follow generally accepted medical methods and may not have a scientific explanation for their effectiveness. It offers treatments that differ from standard medical practice. Homeopathy, herbal medicine, and acupuncture are types of alternative medicine. It is a pestle. Pestle means a heavy tool with a rounded end, used for crushing and grinding substances, such as spices or drugs, typically in a mortar. This is a mortar. Mortar means a cup-shaped receptacle, in which ingredients are crushed or ground, used in cooking or pharmacy. Five ways to treat chronic illness with alternative medicine. Acupuncture, oriental medicine, chiropractic medicine, massage therapy, and naturopathic medicine. When an acupuncturist gives you an acupuncture treatment on your body, you may feel like being pricked by a sharp thorn of pyrocanth tree. Meanwhile, when you smell a strong uric acid out of a fermented skate, you may feel a pungent odor. When it comes to a fermented skate, it reminds me of an island, Hoksindu in Korea. The island is very famous for a fermented skate. This is a skate fish. First, a ventral view, and second, a dorsal view. A fermented skate fish has an unbearably strong pungent odor. <coughs> a skate fish has many thorns on its skin. When you touch it, you feel a little bit like being pricked by thorns on acanthus leaves. Such thorny aching is similar to a pungent feeling when you taste a meat of a fermented steak. What's the difference between acupuncture and injection? First of all, an acupuncturist uses a needle, but a doctor uses a syringe for an injection. A needle for an acupuncture treatment has no any liquid inside, but a syringe contains a medicine liquid, which is inserted into the body of a patient. Vocabulary number four. Acute. Acute angle. Acute angle means an angle measuring less than 90 degree. Etymology. Acute. Acute is derived from Latin root ache meaning sharp and or Greek root agos meaning pain. There are many related words containing this root such as acacia, ache, acumen, acupuncture, acanthus, pyracanth, coelacanth, acme, acne, etc. The definition of acute is as follows. First, very serious or severe. Second, good at understanding things quickly and clearly. And then, very strong and sensitive. When an acupuncturist gives you an acupuncture treatment on your body, you may feel an acute pain like being pricked by a sharp thorn of an acacia tree. The word acupuncture consists of Latin root acus, meaning needle, and Latin root punctura, meaning to puncture, make a hole, perforate. So, the word acupuncture literally means to prick with a needle. Such pain is kind of acute pain, not chronic. Literally, acute is derived from Latin acus, meaning a needle. How aching it is when a syringe or needle penetrates into our body. What's the difference between acute pain and chronic pain? Acute pain is a sudden sensation that alerts us to possible injury. Meanwhile, chronic pain is a pain that persists, often for months or even longer. Acute versus chronic. 
Acute pain is the one that is severe, intense, but also usually is short in duration. Meanwhile, chronic pain is continual and recurring. Acupuncture is a way of treating pain or illness by putting thin needles into parts of body. An acute angle triangle looks like a sharp needle. When it is pressed onto your body, you feel an acute pain. Right angle. Right angle is an angle measuring exactly 90 degrees. Obtuse angle. Obtuse angle is an angle measuring more than 90 degrees. Acute angle. Acute angle is an angle measuring less than 90 degrees. What is the difference between acute, right, and obtuse angle? If an angle measures exactly 90 degrees, it is a right angle. An angle of 60 degrees is an acute angle. An angle of 120 degrees is an obtuse angle. An acute angle is very sharp like the alphabet A, but an obtuse angle isn't. But, if an angle measures exactly 180 degrees, it is not an angle, but a straight line. Look at the alphabet A. It looks like an acute angle triangle. Vocabulary number 5. Acupressure. Acupressure is a form of alternative therapy in which manual pressure is used to stimulate specific points on the body along what are considered to be lines of energy. Etymology. Acupressure. Acupressure is derived from Latin root ache, meaning sharp, and Latin root pressura, meaning pressure. There are many related words containing Latin root ache, such as acacia, acupuncture, acanthus, acute, etc. In addition, there are many words containing Latin root pressura. For examples, depression, suppress, impressive, etc. The word acupressure consists of Latin root acus, meaning a pointed tool, and Latin root pressure, meaning the action of pressing. So, literally the word acupressure means, to press down on the skin. An acupuncture is a method of relieving pain or curing illness by placing needles into a person's skin at particular points on the body. Meanwhile, acupressure is a method of relieving pain or curing illness by pressing on particular points on a person's body, with fingertips, thumbs, or a pointed tool made of a wood. What is the difference between acupuncture and acupressure? We need to focus on the difference of puncture and pressure. Puncture is piercing, penetrating into the skin of body, meanwhile pressure is just pressing on the skin. The former may cause an acute pain, but the latter, a dull one. Vocabulary number 6. Acanthus. An acanthus has beautiful flowers, but focus on its thorny leaves. As its leaves are thorny, it is so named. Etymology. Acanthus. Acanthus is derived from Latin root acanthos, meaning thorn, which is related to Latin root acus, meaning a needle, and Latin root ache, meaning sharp. There are many related words containing these roots, such as acacia, ache, acute, acumen, acupuncture, pyracanth, coelacanth, acme, exacerbate, etc. An acanthus is a herbaceous plant or shrub, with bold flower spikes and spiny decorative leaves, native to the Mediterranean region. A leaf of an acanthus is more beautiful than its flower. The leaf is so attractive to architects. That is why so many Corinthian column capitals was decorated with an elegant acanthus leaf design. Look at the beautiful violet flowers and thorny leaves of an acanthus. An acanthus is very similar to a thistle. Please watch a video on thistle flower in Hallison Mountain. This is a flower of a thistle. A thistle is ungunki in Korean. Its violet flower is very beautiful. Look at the leaves of a thistle. It's very sharp.
Its thorny leaves look closely like those of an acanthus. Bees and butterflies are gathering honey friendly and amicably each other. Here is the Hallison Mountain in Korea. When you visit Jeju Island in Korea, I recommend you to climb the Hallison Mountain by taking a Yungshul course. Literally, an acanthus is derived from Latin root acanthos, meaning thorn and Latin root ache, meaning sharp. It seems to be so called because of its large spiny leaves. A conventionalized representation of an acanthus leaf has been used especially as a decoration for Corinthian column capitals. Look at the capital of the column. It is decorated with a design of acanthus leaves. Acanthus leaf design has been varied over time. Watch the variations in order, Greek, Roman, Romanesque, Renaissance. On the structural columns of Temple of Olympian Zeus, Athena in Greece, you can find a well-carved acanthus leaf design. Another good example is the Pantheon in Rome. Look at the beautiful acanthus leaf carvings on the pillars of the Pantheon. This is a front view of the Pantheon. Look at the capitals of Pantheon's columns. They are decorated with an acanthus leaf design. The Pantheon is composed of Greek root pan, meaning all, and theon, theos, meaning God. Literally, the Pantheon means temple of all gods. Historians estimate that the original Pantheon was constructed somewhere between 29 to 19 BC by Marcus Agrippa, a Roman architect and consul, close friend, son-in-law, and right-hand man to Emperor Augustus. The inscription at the entrance of the Pantheon reads, in Latin, as follows. It translates roughly as Marcus Agrippa, son of Lucius, having been consul three times, made it, or Marcus Agrippa constructed this, while being consul for the third time. Although Emperor Hadrian rebuilt the Pantheon in the historic center of Rome between 119 to 128 AD, long after Marcus Agrippa's death, the inscription remains. Another curiosity about the Pantheon's dimensions is that the height from the floor to the oculus and the diameter of the dome are the same, 43.2 meters. This means that a perfect sphere could fit inside the Pantheon, which is believed to be a symbolic reference to a sacred place, or quite literally, to the celestial sphere. This is a view of the oculus from the sky. The oculus is located behind the Pantheon. This is the oculus. Its outside is shaped like a silo, but inside, like a perfect sphere. This is the inside the oculus. Its inner space looks like a perfect sphere. Vocabulary number 7. Acan Acanthocephalus. The acanthocephalus has many thorny hooks on its head, as an acanthus leaf does. Etymology. Acanthocephalus. Acanthocephalus is composed of Latin root acanthos, meaning thorn, and Latin root cephalo, meaning head. Literally, it means kind of parasite having thorny hooks on its head. There are many related words containing Latin root acanthos, such as acacia, ache, acute, acumen, acupuncture, pyracanth, coelacanth, acme, exacerbate, acne, etc. In addition, there are many words containing Latin root cephalo, such as bucephalus, cephalopod, microcephalic, etc. An acanthocephalus is a genus of parasitic worms, especially fish parasite. It is also found in humans and primates, causing human acanthocephaliasis. Literally, acanthocephalus means head, with thorns. Latin root acantho means thorn, and Latin root cephalo and Greek root kephalo mean head, respectively.
Meanwhile, acanthus is derived from Latin acantho, meaning thorn. It seems to be so called after its large spiny leaves. The thorny leaf of an acanthus looks sharper than the thorny hooks on the head part of an acanthocephalus. A conventionalized representation of an acanthus leaf has been used especially as a decoration for Corinthian column capitals. The word capital has various meanings. For example, large letter of alphabet, property or wealth, main city of a country like Seoul in Korea, and head of a column or pillar. But, these all meanings come from head. A head is an important and top part of our body. And the head letter in head, H, is a large letter, capital letter. Literally, the word capital is derived from Latin cephalo or Greek kephalo, meaning head. Even the word head also comes from these roots. Various words such as cap, captain, chief, achievement, chef, gab, gat, etc., come from Latin root cephalo or Greek root kephalo, meaning head. You can see here six Latin roots. We can learn new words by mixing these root one another. Let's see what words we can coin now. Start a journey of building your vocabulary. Star number two, Latin root acantho meaning thorn. Star number four, Latin root cephalo meaning head. Star number two and star number four make the word acanthocephalus. Literally means head with thorns. An acanthocephalus is a genus of parasitic worms, especially fish parasite. Star number six, Latin root pod meaning foot. Star number four and star number six make the word cephalopod. Cephalopod literally means head foot. Cephalopod's head connects to its many arms which look like a foot. That is why they are so named. Squids and octopuses are cephalopods. Star number three, Latin root tri meaning three. Star number three and star number six make the word tripod. Tripod literally means three feet. A tripod is a three-legged stand for supporting a camera or other apparatus. A tripod has three legs, an octopus has eight legs and a squid has ten legs. Star number one, Latin root gone meaning angle. Star number three and star number one make the word trigonometry. Trigonometry literally means three angles. Trigonometry is the branch of mathematics, dealing with the relations of the sides and angles of triangles, and with the relevant functions of any angles. Star number 5, Latin root penta meaning 5. Star number 5 and star number 1 make the word pentagon. Pentagon literally means 5 angles. Pentagon means a plane figure with 5 straight sides and 5 angles. Pentagon also means the Pentagonal Building serving as the headquarters of the U.S. Department of Defense near Washington, D.C. Part of the building was badly damaged in the terrorist attacks of the 11th of September 2001. A pentagon has five angles, and a triangle has three angles. Literally, acanthocephalus means head with thorns. Latin root acantho means thorn and Latin root cephalo means head. That is, as an acanthocephalus has many hooks on its head, like thorny leaves of acanthus, it is so named. These columns also have an acanthus leaf decoration on its head part, column capital. Acanthus leaf design has been varied over time. Watch the variations in order, Greek, Roman, Romanesque, Renaissance. The head part, capital of these columns are more beautiful than that of acanthocephalus. Vocabulary number 8. Pyracanth. Look at the thorns of pyracanth. They are very sharp.
Look at the red fruit of pyracanth. The tree looks like burning due to its crimson colored F. Pyracanth literally means fire and thorn. That is why it is also called fire thorn. Etymology Pyracanth. Pyracanth is composed of Latin root pyro, meaning fire, and Latin root acantho, meaning thorn. There are many words containing Latin root pyro, such as fire thorn, pyrotechnics, pyrophobia, etc. In addition, there are many related words containing Latin root acantho, such as acacia, acupuncture, acanthus, coelacanth, etc. The pyracanth tree has a sharp thorn which is hidden behind leaves. Look at the flower of a pyracanth. It's very white like cherry blossom. But, its fruit wears in red, like an apple. If you look at crimson-colored pyracanthus fruits, you may think that a fire occurs at the tree. A long sharpened thorn protects crimson-colored pyracanthus fruits from being picked off by humans. Pyracanth is composed of Latin pyro, meaning fire, and Latin acantho, meaning thorn. Literally pyracanth means burning thorn. That is why pyracanth is also called fire thorn. Someone focuses on its scarlet red fruit. Someone focuses on its long sharp thorns, and others its white flower. In French, it is called buisson ardent, meaning burning tree. They just focus on the scarlet color of its fruit, not on sharp thorn. In French, it is also called aubépine, meaning white thorn. In this case, they focus on its white flower and sharp thorn. In Italian, it is called albaspina, biancospino, meaning white thorn. They also focus on its white flower and sharp thorn. In addition, in German, it is called rotthorn, meaning red thorn. They focus on both its red fruit and sharp thorn. But, in Spanish, it is called espino, meaning thorn. They must just focus on its sharp thorn. Literally speaking, such words as pyracant, firethorn and rotdorn represent the tree best, including a meaning of tree with red fruit and sharp thorn. Look at the scarlet red fruit of a pyracanth. It looks like being set on fire. Look at the thorns amid the leaves. They are very sharp. Meanwhile, in Korean, a pyracanth is called Sansa Namu, meaning a tree with thorns growing in mountains. They also just focus on its sharp thorn. A phoneme, thorn, dorn, jern, means something like thorns such as a wooden nail, arrow, and hairpin. In addition, a phoneme, gur, gar, kar, har, means a cute tool or weapon, such as spear, saber, and sword. There are many word containing a phoneme gar meaning a sword across languages. A phoneme gur, gar, kar, har means a sharp pointed weapon or tool. Same phoneme has a similar meaning in various languages such as English, Latin, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, etc. This proves that all languages came from one origin, a proto-language. Let's study how many words have been derived from this same phoneme. This letter is Korean, meaning knife, sword, or gar. Listen and repeat three times. 칼 칼, 칼. Chinese words Ge, ge, jia, jia, also mean a knife, same as Korean word carl. The first part of the word carve means also a sharp tool like a knife. In addition, an English word gar means a sharp pointed tool like a knife or sword. 
The word gar is combined with fish, making the word garfish. This is a garfish. It looks like a gar, sword. Garfish is composed of two words, gar and fish. Literally, garfish means a gar-like fish. Garfish in English is galchi in Korean. Galchi in Korean and garfish in English are a homophonous synonym. Garfish was called kalchi in Korean at first. Later it is called galchi. A garfish is also called garpike, or cutlass fish. Look at the picture of a leek. Its leaves look like a round pipe. Look at the picture of a garlic in the right. The leaf of a garlic is sharper than that of a leek. It looks like a blade of a sword. Garlic is composed of Latin gar, meaning a sword, and Latin lick, meaning a leek. Literally, garlic means kind of leek whose leaf is sharp like a blade of a sword. There are other various words containing same phoneme, meaning a sword, or gar, as follows. Gary. Gary is a masculine name, derived from gar, meaning a sword. Roger. Roger is a masculine name, literally meaning famous with a spear. In radio communication, Roger means, yes, I understood. Roger is the U.S. military phonetic alphabet word for the letter R. In this case letter R is an abbreviation for, received. Gerald. Gerald is a masculine proper name, literally meaning a spear wielder. Gerard. Gerard is a masculine name, literally meaning strong with a spear. Augur means an instrument for boring larger holes, derived from gar, meaning spear. Edgar. Edgar is a masculine name, literally meaning, prosperity spear. Goad. Goad is a stick controlling a cattle. It is derived from gar, meaning a spear. Gad. Gad is, a sharp stick for driving oxen. It is derived from gar, meaning a spear. Gua. Gua. Cucumber in English is guo in Chinese. As cucumbers look like a long sword, it is called guo in Chinese. Harvard. The surname Harvard literally means army guard. Half is either of two equal or corresponding parts into which something can be divided. Literally, half means cutting in half with a sword. Harold. Harold is a masculine proper name, literally meaning army commander. Harry. Harry is a masculine proper name, literally meaning armed force. Herbert. Herbert is a masculine name, literally meaning army bright. It means cutting with a knife. Oscar. Oscar is a masculine proper name, literally meaning God's spear. It means cutting or severing with a sword. Look at the flower of a pyrocanth. It's very white like cherry blossom. But, its fruit wears in red, like an apple. In addition, its white flowers look similar to that of apple tree. And the red-colored small berry of pyrocanth tastes an apple too. That is why its berry is a favorite food to humans and birds. When you climb up Halasan Mountain by taking a Yangshil course, you can hear many birds chirp happily in the bush of pyrocanth, eating its red berry. Look at the waxwings. They are chirping in the thorny bush of pyrocanth trees. Watch here a video on waxwings in the bush of pyrocanth. Look at the pictures of birds, eating pyrocanth berry. 
In China, people love to eat its red berry coated by honey and sugar syrup. It's Tonghu Lu. In Chinese, Tonghu Lu. Vocabulary number nine. Coelacanth. A coelacanth is recognized as a living fossil. Etymology. Coelacanth. Coelacanth is composed of Greek koilos, meaning empty, and Greek acantha, meaning spine. There are many related words such as acacia, acupuncture, acanthus, pyracanth, acanthocephalus, acumen, acne, exasperation, etc. This tough, elastic tube, which is partially hollow and filled with fluid, acts as a spine for a coelacanth. Notochord. Notochord means a cartilaginous skeletal rod supporting the body in all embryonic and some adult chordate animals. Coelacanth is composed of Greek koilos, meaning whole, hollow, empty, and Greek acantha, meaning thorn, spine. Literally, it means hollow spine. A coelacanth is so called due to a long, hollow spine supporting the tail in fossil remains. Coelacanths are sometimes known as living fossils, animals that have changed little over millions of years. These ancient fish are more closely related to foreland vertebrates, including humans, than they are to many fishes. For many years coelacanths were only known from fossils, it was thought that they had become extinct around 70 million years ago. Incredibly, a living coelacanth was caught off the coast of South Africa in 1938, in effect, bringing the coelacanths back from the dead. Living fossil, the coelacanth. Extant specimen. Extinct fossil specimen. Watch a video on living fossil, the coelacanth. If you want to know something about how our ancestors came out of the ocean and onto land, there are just two sorts of fish you should get to know really well. One is the lungfish, our closest aquatic relatives, and the other is the coelacanth, our next closest. Trout, goldfish, salmon, they are all just distant rafend cousins. Lungfish and coelacanths, by contrast, have much in common with us including a few of the bones that would give rise to our legs and arms. And coelacanths are especially fascinating because until the 1930s, scientists believed that they had gone extinct 70 million years ago. Now, they turn out to live off the coasts of both Africa and Indonesia. Coelacanths are more closely related to tetrapods, four-limbed vertebrates, than to ray-finned fish, which make up the majority of other living fish species. It has been suggested that coelacanths form a direct evolutionary link between the groups. The coelacanths have eight fleshy, lobed fins, a pair of dorsal fins, a pair of pectoral fins, a pair of pelvic fins and a single anal fin and caudal fin. The caudal fin is divided into three sections, with a secondary tail extending past the main one. Living fossil, the coelacanth. Look at the fins of a coelacanth below. First dorsal fin. Second dorsal fin. Pectoral fin. Pelvic fin. Anal fin. Caudal fin. Vocabulary number 10. Acumen. 
Business acumen. Business acumen is the ability to think quickly and make a good decision. Etymology. Acumen. Acumen is composed of Latin ache, meaning sharp, and Latin men, meaning to think. Literally, acumen means sharp thinking. There are many related words including Latin root ache, such as acacia, acme, acanthus, coelacanth, acute, acanthocephalus, acupuncture, acupressure, etc. What is business acumen? Acumen is the ability to think quickly and make good decisions. A company whose management has an outstanding business acumen can enjoy a comparative advantage over competitors. To become a great company, there are three factors required as follows. Business acumen, behavioral skills, and finance skills. In order to have business acumen, there are three prerequisites as follows. First, knowledge, such as financial literacy, contextual knowledge, and organizational knowledge. Second, skills, such as stakeholder awareness and self-awareness. Last, ability, such as ability to deal with ambiguity and ability to link cause and effect. The startup company reached its acme in achieving business profits due to the excellent business acumen of the newly appointed CEO. English words related to acumen are as follows, acute, clever, crafty, sophisticated, sharp, savvy, sapient, shrewd, shark, science, sly, skilled, discerning, sensitive, decisive, smart, astute, astucious, arguta, ace, etc. All above listed words are closely related to fast understanding and quick decision. In making a significant decision in business, the most important thing is timing. Even good business opportunity will go away, as it misses timing. If a company makes a critical decision for investment at an opportune time, it can become a great company beyond good one. They say that in everyone's life, good opportunity comes three times at least. If you grab one of them firmly, such opportunity will be a seed for your fortune farm. Linguistically, phonemes such as tune, ton, turn, dern, dorn, jern, chan, churn, jern, shun, sun, soon, huan, one means to turn, to tune, to change across languages. For example, there are many related words across languages as follows. In the real world, everything changes over time. That is, everything changes, but change itself. In the turmoil of the changing world, there are always lots of chances next door. No chances without changes. Changes for chances. Look out chances in all changes. Change G in change into C for chance. If you tune your tone to a rhythm of ever-turning world and fortunately grab one of the best opportunities at the most opportune time, someday your great fortune story will be published in Fortune magazine. Therefore, quit too focusing on changes and drowning in their waves. Instead, start to focus on finding out chances therewith for your best life in the future. Under the sky, all things change. Season changes. Spring, summer, fall and winter. Even the universe changes and turns. Universe is composed of Latin root uni, meaning one, and Latin root vert, meaning to rotate, to turn. Literally, the word universe means turning in one and unison. That is why Korean calls the sky tiern, meaning turning. According to Hanmung Jaho and Chian Jamun, a dictionary and textbook of Korean Hanja, Korean Hanja, Chian, meaning a sky, was pronounced as Tiern, not Chian. The phoneme Tiern means to turn.
Look at the book on the left. It is Han Mong Jer He. Look at the book on the right. It is Chern Jer Moon, a textbook for studying Korean Hanja. Look at the Korean Hanja Tiern, meaning sky, in red circle. Listen and repeat. Hanal Tion. Hanal Tion. Look at the Korean Hanja Tiern, meaning sky. Listen and repeat. Hanal Tion. Hanal Tion. Since old times, Korean have called the sky tiern because the sky looks like turning and rotating. Vocabulary number 11. Acme. Acme is the highest point of something. Etymology. Acme. Acme is derived from Latin root ache, meaning sharp. There are many related words containing this root such as acacia, acute, acanthus, acupuncture, etc. Literally, acumen means the highest sharp point of something. Acme means the highest point of something. So, it is very attractive as a company name. Acme Markets Incorporated is a supermarket chain, operating 164 stores throughout New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and New York. It is headquartered in East Whiteland Township, Pennsylvania, near Malvern, a Philadelphia suburb. Acme was established in 1891. With the excellent business acumen of top management and creative marketing strategy, Acme has reached its Acme in sales and business profits in the company history. If a company takes a process of innovation in time, they can reach the highest point, Acme, of in their business achievements such as profits and revenues. Though, Acme, means the highest point of something, the word, Acme, is not included in such something. The highest point of Acme is not called Acme but head, like whitehead or blackhead. Vocabulary number 12. Acne. Acne is an inflammatory disorder of the skin. It rises up from the skin, shaping like a minimal size of the alphabet A. Etymology Acne Acne is an inflammatory disorder of the skin. Acne is derived from Latin root ache, meaning sharp. There are many related words containing this root such as acacia, acute, acanthus, acupuncture, etc. Acne is a skin condition that occurs when your hair follicles become plugged with oil and dead skin cell. It causes whiteheads, blackheads or pimples. Look at the severe acne which has been aggravated by squeezing. The top point of a mountain is called apex or peak, but the inflammatory swollen bulged part of our skin on a face like a pimple, is called, acne. When you squeeze the pus out of an acne, you may feel achy. But, don't do that or it will be aggravated to the severe state of inflammation. Vocabulary number 13. Acer. Look at the leaves of an acer tree. They are very sharp, looking like a ninja star. Etymology. Acer. Acer is derived from Latin root ache, meaning sharp, and Latin root acus, meaning needle. Look at the leaves of an acer tree. They look like a ninja star, very sharp. That is why acer is so named. There are many related words having this roots, such as acacia, acute, ache, acupuncture, pyracantha, acanthocephalus, acme, etc. The leaf of an acer tree, maple, is very sharp and looks like ninja star. In Canada, there are lots of maple, acer trees. They make a maple syrup by evaporating its sap. Especially, such kind of a maple tree is a Northern American maple.
from the sap of which maple sugar and maple syrup are made. In the sugar bush, there are many sugar maples. In the season of collecting the sap from maple trees, you can also see buckets hanging around the maple tree or tubing system. In the old times, they collected the maple sap by using a tap and bucket. But, nowadays, they collected it by using a tubing method. First, collect the sap by using traditional bucket or modern tubing system in the sugar bush. Second, gather all collected sap into the storage tank. Third, evaporate the collected sap by using an evaporator at the sugar house. Finally, you can have a delicious maple syrup. Canadian people love to eat a maple syrup, tasting sweet and little spicy. In Canada, maple trees are ubiquitous. Every family has a maple syrup. Look at the center of national flag of Canada. The scarlet leaf design is that of maple and acer tree. Meanwhile, Korean people called an acer tree, maple, sid, similarly pronounced as sweet, in 1446. But, the origin of sid is still unknown. This book is Hunmin Jongium Haley. The book Hunmin Jongium Haley is the textbook for learning Korean letter Hunmin Jongium. Literally, Hunmin Jongium means correct sons for the instruction of the people. In the book Hunmin Jongium Haley, you can see the letter Sid. Sid, we, pung. Sid is an acer, maple tree. In my opinion, the old Korean word, Sid, is correlated to English word, sweet. I think that both, Sid, and, sweet, come from same origin. Because the sap of a maple, acer tree, tastes sweet, probably primitive human beings used to call the tree, as seed, verbally. After a written language, Hunmin Jongium, was invented in 1443 in Korea. Korean people probably used to write the sound, seed, as, sid, similarly pronounced as, sweet. Unfortunately, however, today, the word, sid, was not used. They use, danpung, instead. Personally, I wish that the beautiful Korean word, sid, be restored and used again. Which do you think is the sharpest? Number 1. Acacia thorn. Number 2. Acanthus leaf. Number 3. Pyracanth thorn. Number 4. Acer leaf. Which do you think is the sweetest? Number 1. Acacia honey. Number 2. Maple syrup. Number 3. Tonghulu, made of pyracanth fruit. Maple leaves are very sharp like the peak of the alphabet A. Maple leaves are very similar to ninja star. Ninja stars are also very sharp like the peak of the alphabet A. Vocabulary number 14. Acerbic. Acerbic means sharp, sarcastic, critical, forthright especially in the style of speaking. Etymology. Acerbic. Acerbic is derived from Latin root ache, meaning sharp. There are many related words including this root, such as acacia, acute, acanthus, acid, acetic, etc. Definition. Acerbic means expressing harsh, sharp, or fortrite criticism in a clever way. Look at another definition of acerbic. Acerbic is used to describe something that is spoken or written in a way that is direct, clever, and cruel. Acerbic is bitter, harsh, unkind. The picture says it all, doesn't it? Something acerbic is something as sour or bitter in taste as a lemon is. Acerbic. Acerbic means that something is as sour or bitter in a manner of speech. A sour bite is acerbic. His dark, acerbic humor turned off the audience. Like an unsuspected bite of lemon would turn off a diner.
He was a Serbic, and he was an ace at bickering. A Serbic. A Serbic is bitter, harsh, unkind. Vocabulary number 15. Acerbate. Synonym. Irritate, exasperate. Etymology. Acerbate. Acerbate is derived from Latin root ache, meaning sharp. There are many related words including this root, such as acacia, acute, acanthus, acid, acetic, etc. Definition. To make bitter or disagreeable. Synonym. Worsen, aggravate. Mom is speaking against dad to children, which poisons their mind against dad. It will acerbate the relationship between family members. If a waiter serves you a cup of sour lemon juice when you order a cup of acacia honey tea, you feel acerbic in mood and get very acerbated, very resentful. Vocabulary number 16. Exacerbate. Exacerbate is make aggravated like fueling on a fire. Synonym. Irritate. Exasperate. Etymology. Exacerbate. Exacerbate is derived from Latin prefix ex, meaning out, and Latin root ache, meaning sharp. There are many related words including this root, such as acacia, acute, acanthus, acid, acetic, etc. Definition. Exacerbate is to make a given bad situation or problem worse. Synonym. Aggravate. Eating too many eggs will exacerbate your already high cholesterol levels. Anything that's done to address unemployment in terms of massive stimulus spending is going to exacerbate deficits. And anything that's done to address deficits in the short term is going to exacerbate unemployment. Fueled on a fire. Exacerbate. Exacerbate means to make worse. Synonym. Aggravate. Aggravate and exacerbate are so similar in meaning. People often use them interchangeably in many instances when they are talking about frustration or annoyance. But they are not quite the same in meaning. When referring to a pre-existing condition or injury, aggravate typically refers to a permanent change in the condition, while exacerbate makes a temporary increase in symptoms. Here is an example as follows. Example. Aggravate. The employee with degenerative disc disease from aging found that his work aggravated his condition, making it impossible for him to continue in that position. Example. Exacerbate. The employee with degenerative disc disease from aging found that his workplace injury exacerbated the problem, so he had to take some time off to heal. Compare. Aggravate versus exacerbate. In the first sentence, the employee's condition was permanently made worse by his work, while the second sentence shows that a work injury made it temporarily worse. Aggravate. Synonym. Exasperate. Irritate. Vocabulary number 17. Exasperate. Synonym. Irritate. Exacerbate. The bees exasperated the man trying to read the newspaper. Etymology. Exasperate. Exasperate is composed of prefix ex, meaning out, and Latin root asper, meaning rough. There are many words containing this root, such as acacia, acute, acanthus, acerbate, etc. Definition. To make someone very angry or annoy. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Few things exasperate a child more than inconsistency. Pity the horse that has a rider who gives it mixed signals, digging his heels into its side, and pulling the reins, at the same time. Even more. Pity the child who has the rules changed by a capricious father, and who is always exasperated because of the conflicting messages he receives. 
exacerbate, and exasperate are often used interchangeably because they have such a similar sound. But these two words have different meanings in the English language. If you are talking about aggravating or annoying someone, you will use the word exasperate. If you are talking about making a bad situation worse, you will use exacerbate. Example Exasperate. First, why won't he call back? She asked in an exasperated voice while waiting for results from her doctor. Second, the new limited hours of the local restaurant exasperated many of its regular customers. Example, exacerbate. First, the new subway construction is exacerbating the already problematic traffic along that busy highway. Second, the COVID-19 pandemic exacerbated the already bad situation of local economy. Vocabulary number 18. Acid. Etymology. Acid. Acid is derived from Latin root ache, meaning sharp. There are many related words containing this root, such as acacia, acute, acerbate, acetic, etc. Definition. A chemical with a sour taste. As a noun, acid means a chemical substance that neutralizes alkalis, dissolves some metals, and turns litmus red. Typically, a corrosive or sour-tasting liquid of this kind. Meanwhile, as an adjective, acid means tasting sour, or saying sarcastic, strong, and critical in tone. Acidic also has a similar meaning. Acid and base. Hydrogen ions are acids, and hydroxide ions are bases. Acid is any substance which produces hydrogen ions when dissolved into water. Base is any substance which when dissolved into water produces hydroxide ions. Acid is a substance that releases hydrogen ions in water. Differences between acid and base with examples. Acids. Taste sour. React with some metals to give off hydrogen gas. Conduct electricity in solution. Bases. Taste bitter. Feel slippery. Dissolve fats and oils. The pH of a solution is a measure of hydrogen ion concentration in a solution. On a scale from 0 to 14, lower pH solutions are strong acids, higher pH are bases. Solutions measuring pH 7 are neutral. For example, lemons and apples are acidic, household cleaners are basic, and milk is neutral. Acid. Sour taste. Turns blue litmus red. Reacts with some metals to produce hydrogen. Dissolves carbonate salts, releasing carbon dioxides. Base. Bitter taste. Turns red litmus blue. Slippery to the touch. Acid turns blue litmus red, and base turns red litmus blue. Why do we add acids to water and not water to acid? It is correct and normal to add acid to water slowly. But, it is very dangerous to put water into acid. It leads to an explosion. Dead or dying trees are a common sight in areas affected by acid rain. Acid rain leaches aluminum from the soil. That aluminum may be harmful to plants as well as animals. Acid rain also removes minerals and nutrients from the soil that trees need to grow. Look at the process of acid rain generation. First, acidic gases released into the atmosphere. Second, gases carried upwards by the wind. Third, gases combine with water droplets to form acids. Fourth, acid rains fall down on earth. Fifth, acid rain destroys plants, pollutes water sources and soil, and erodes buildings. Look at the trees devastated because of acid rain. The process of acid rain formation is as follows. First, water is evaporated into the air. 
Second, acidic gases such as nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide are released into the atmosphere. Third, such acidic gases combine with water droplets from the clouds to form acids. Fourth, trees are killed by acid rain. At high elevations, acidic fog and clouds might strip nutrients from trees' foliage, leaving them with brown or dead leaves and needles. The trees are then less able to absorb sunlight, which makes them weak and less able to withstand freezing temperatures. Acidic fog. Acidic fog also kills trees as acid rain does. Trees at higher elevations can be more affected because of increased exposure to acidic fog or acidic cloud vapor. As water evaporates from leaf, acid becomes more concentrated, which burns the leaf tissue. Acid deposition also affects human-made structures. In addition, acid rain can dissolve limestone and marble through direct contact. Acid solution is very strong, when touching on skin, it will burn the skin severely as much as it erodes the surface of metal. By the way, what will happen if spraying it on our face? We will feel dying pain, an ugly burning scar remained. Despite stricter laws and punishments, the number of acid attacks in India continues to increase. Prajya Prasun was on her way from the Hindu holy city of Varanasi to the capital New Delhi days after her wedding, when a distant male relative poured acid on her. I initially didn't realize what was happening. My skin was burning, fumes were coming off it, and it smelled as though a tire was burning on my body, recalls Prasun, who was only 22 years old at that time. The relative attacked her with acid because she had rejected his marriage proposal. Ten years have passed since the assault, which burned 47% of her body. Still, Prasun remains thankful to a doctor who was traveling in the same train as her on the night of the attack. The doctor, she says, saved her life that night. She instantly recognized it as acid and requested everyone in the train to put as much as water as possible on me so that the acid gets washed off, Prasun said, adding. She gave me her scarf to cover my body as my clothes were burned along with my skin. Acid attacks shall not be done again. An acid attack is a crime against humanity. Any violator shall be severely punished. Vocabulary number 19. Acetic. Acetic acid. Acetic acid has the chemical formula of CH3COOH. Etymology. Acetic. Acetic is derived from Latin root ache, meaning sharp. There are many related words containing this root, such as acacia, acute, acanthus, acid, acerbic, exacerbate, etc. Definition. Of. Or like vinegar, or acetic acid. Acetic acid is a hygroscopic liquid with a vinegar odor. It is colorless but corrosive. It causes severe burns when contacting eyes, skin, respiratory tract. Acetic acid is a byproduct of fermentation, and gives vinegar its characteristic odor. Vinegar is about 4-6% acetic acid in water. More concentrated solutions can be found in laboratory use, and pure acetic acid containing only traces of water is known as glacial acetic acid. What is the difference between acetic acid and vinegar? Vinegar contains acetic acid and water. Therefore, somewhat diluted acetic acid is found in vinegar. Other than acetic acid, natural vinegar may contain other compounds like citric acid, tartaric acid, etc. Tartaric acid is highly water-soluble and has a very strong tart taste. Tartaric acid is naturally found in grapes and bananas. 
It has been reported that tartaric acid to enhance the flavor of grape-flavored and lime-flavored beverages. Citric acid is found naturally in citrus fruits, especially lemons and limes. Because of its acidic, sour-tasting nature, citric acid is predominantly used as a flavoring and preserving agent. Comparison of citric acid and ascorbic acid. Are they same, or different? When people hear vitamin C, they picture citric fruits like lemon, orange, and lime, among other fruits and vegetables. And we all know these fruits and vegetables contain vitamin C and also citric acid which is partly responsible for their sourness. So, it's not uncommon to think that vitamin C and citric acid are the same. Citric acid and vitamin C are very different. Vitamin C is alternatively known as ascorbic acid and it isn't interchangeable with citric acid. Both of these have very different functions. Nonetheless, it's easy to confuse ascorbic acid with citric because their sources are very similar. In fact, citric acid is more acidic than vitamin C but citric acid is an antioxidant. While ascorbic acid is simply a vitamin. Vitamin C is an essential element that is highly beneficial for good health. A human body is incapable of making vitamin C on its own. Experts suggest a consumption somewhere between 75 to 120 milligrams every day. Vitamin C is essential for the repair and development of your body. It plays an active role in collagen formation, iron absorption, and a properly functioning immune system. You need vitamin C for the maintenance of your bones, teeth, and cartilage. It also has antioxidant properties, so you'll get protection from free radicals that cause inflammation. You can find vitamin C in different fruits and vegetables like broccoli, kiwi, tomato juice, red cabbage, and pureed vegetables and fruits. Vocabulary number 20. Acrid. Acrid means bitter and unpleasant in taste or smell. Etymology. Acrid. Acrid is derived from Latin root ache, meaning sharp. There are many related words containing this root, such as acacia, acute, acanthus, acid, acerbic, acrimonious, etc. Definition. Bitter and unpleasant in taste or smell. Acrid is, sharp and harsh or unpleasantly pungent in taste or odor, irritating. Also, acrid means, deeply or violently bitter, synonym. Acrimonious. Example 1. The food the newly employed Indian chef had made was so acrid, that I had to spit out, due to the pungent vinegar taste, and repugnant garlic flavor. Example 2. Acrid smoke from the forest fire covered the sky for miles, the sun barely visible. In adjacent villages, lots of farmhouses were caught in the flames, turning into ashes. Example 3. People said that the acrid smoke from the fire seemed to burn their throat and eyes. They found flames and thick acrid black smoke pouring from the forest. Vocabulary number 21. Acrimonious. Acrimonious means spiteful and harsh in tone. Etymology. Acrimonious. Acrimonious is composed of Latin root ache, meaning sharp, and Latin root mon, meaning speech, letter. Literally, acrimonious means speaking in a sharp tone. There are many related words containing Latin root ache meaning sharp, such as acacia, acute, acerbic, acrid, ardent, etc. In addition, there are many words having Latin root mon, meaning speech, letter, such as comment, communicate, harmony, ceremony, testimony, etc. Definition. Speaking bitter and harsh with a high-toned voice.
Acrimonious means full of anger, bitterness, and spiteful in the process of discussion or meeting, exchanging harsh words. Linguistically speaking, a phoneme, men, moon, mon means speech, character, verbal and or written language. That is why acrimonious means not just sharpness, but sharpness in tone of speech. For example, you can find the phoneme in such words as follows, comment, mention, mentor, common, summon, demonstrate, communication, communism, commune, meaning, and Korean hanja, moon, moon, moon. Look at the three Korean hanja words. They all are pronounced as moon. That is, they have a common phoneme, moon. A phoneme, men, moon, mon means speech, character, verbal and or written language. The first Korean hanja moon means a written character. The second Korean hanja moon means to ask. The third Korean hanja moon means to hear, listen. That is, in order to write, to ask, and to listen, we need a word. Example 1. They loved each other and finally they married. At the wedding ceremony, the wedding officiant focused on keeping harmony, not on exchanging acrimonious words. Example 2. At last, their matrimony begins. Unfortunately, however, they started to exchange bitter and harsh words. The acrimonious words of the couple made their children uncomfortable. Example 3. What's worse, an alleged adultery issue exacerbated their matrimony. Their relationship was so hostile and acrimonious, no wonder it ended in a divorce by mutual agreement. Vocabulary number 22. Argument. Argument means an angry disagreement, synonym, quarrel. Etymology. Argument. According to the majority of etymologists, argument is derived from Latin root arg, meaning shine or white. But in my opinion, its origin is based on Latin ache, meaning sharp. There are many related words containing Latin root ache, such as acacia, acanthus, pyracanth, acute, acid, acerbate, exacerbate, exasperate, acrimonious, etc. Meanwhile, there are also many words including Latin root arg, meaning shine, such as Argentina, Argentum, Argo, Litharge, Argus, Australia, Austria, East, etc. An argument is a statement or set of statements that you use in order to try to convince people that your opinion about something is correct. But, nowadays, when it comes to an argument, it reminds me of a situation, in which people shout and say angry words, because they disagree with each other. That is why I think that the word argument is derived from Latin root ache, meaning sharp, as shown in words such as acute, acid, acacia and acerbate. But most of etymologists say that, argument is composed of Latin root arg, meaning, to shine, or white, and meant, common suffix of Latin origin, forming nouns. Maybe, they think that when people argue each other, they will focus on making their assertion look logical, and conspicuously outstanding, like a shining silver, argentum. But, when you argue with someone, you shout and say angry words because you severely disagree with him. So, it had better to focusing on the atrocious expression of speakers when checking its origin. An acrimonious discussion or argument involves a lot of anger and disagreement. At the meeting, speakers' words are very acrid, exacerbating given problems. Meanwhile, you can find Latin root arg, meaning, to shine, or white, in words such as Argentina, Argentum, Litharge, Argo, Argus, etc. Argentina is a country located in Latin America. The capital of Argentina is Buenos Aires, literally meaning, good air.
Vocabulary number 23. Ague. Ague is malaria or another illness involving fever and shivering. Etymology. Ague. Ague is derived from Latin root ache, meaning sharp. There are many related words containing this root, such as acacia, acute, acanthus, acid, acerbic, argument, etc. Definition. Ague is a fever with successive stages of fever and chills, especially when caused by malaria. Ague is a fit of fever or shivering or shaking chills, especially caused by malaria, and accompanied by malaise, pains in bones and joints, etc. Literally, malaria means bad air, composed of Latin root mal meaning bad, black, and Latin root aria, meaning air. People think that malaria occurs because of bad air. But, in fact, it is caused by bad water and mosquito. Meanwhile, the capital of Argentina is Buenos Aires, literally meaning good air. According to a literal inference, malaria will not occur there. Look at the below two words. Malaria versus malaise. They have a similar spelling and pronunciation, but have a different meaning. Malaria is a kind of disease, and malaise is one of its symptoms. Literally, malaise means bad condition in health or unease, composed of Latin root mal meaning bad or black, and Latin root a's meaning ease. Vocabulary 24. Augur. Auger is a hand tool with a bit shaped like a corkscrew, for boring holes in wood. Look at the picture of an auger. You learn now how to use a power auger. An auger looks like a corkscrew. Etymology. Auger. Auger is composed of Latin root ache, meaning sharp, and Latin root gar, meaning spear or saber. Literally, auger means a sharp spear. There are many related words containing these roots, such as acacia, acute, acanthus, acid, acerbic, argument, ague, on, all, etc. Definition. Auger is a sharp tool that is used chiefly for making a hole. Using earth augers in the garden. An auger is any of various tools or devices with a helical shaft or part that are used for boring holes, as in wood, soil, or ice. Most of etymologists say that the origin of auger is Latin gar, meaning saber, sword, or shovel. But, an auger is also a kind of awl, a pointed tool for making hole, though it is far larger. Meanwhile, a phoneme, gur, gar, kar, har, means an acute tool or weapon, such as spear, saber, and sword. There are many word containing a phoneme gar meaning a sword, across languages. A phoneme, gur, gar, kar, har, means a sharp pointed weapon, or tool. Same phoneme has a similar meaning in various languages such as English, Latin, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, etc. This proves that all languages came from one origin, a proto-language. Let's study how many words have been derived from this same phoneme. This letter is Korean, meaning knife, sword, or gar. Listen and repeat three times. 칼 칼, 칼. Chinese words 歌, 歌, 家, 家, also mean a knife, same as Korean word carl. The first part of the word carve means also a sharp tool like a knife. In addition, an English word gar means a sharp pointed tool like a knife or sword. The word gar is combined with fish, making the word garfish. This is a garfish. It looks like a gar, sword. Garfish is composed of two words, gar and fish. 
Literally, garfish means a gar-like fish. Garfish in English is galchi in Korean. Galchi in Korean and garfish in English are a homophonous synonym. Garfish was called kalchi in Korean at first. Later it is called galchi. A garfish is also called garpike, or cutlass fish. Look at the picture of a leek. Its leaves look like a round pipe. Look at the picture of a garlic in the right. The leaf of a garlic is sharper than that of a leek. It looks like a blade of a sword. Garlic is composed of Latin gar, meaning a sword, and Latin lick, meaning a leek. Literally, garlic means kind of leek whose leaf is sharp like a blade of a sword. There are other various words containing same phoneme, meaning a sword, or gar, as follows. Gary. Gary is a masculine name, derived from gar, meaning a sword. Roger. Roger is a masculine name, literally meaning famous with a spear. In radio communication, Roger means, yes, I understood. Roger is the U.S. military phonetic alphabet word for the letter R. In this case letter R is an abbreviation for, received. Gerald. Gerald is a masculine proper name, literally meaning a spear wielder. Gerard. Gerard is a masculine name, literally meaning strong with a spear. Augur means an instrument for boring larger holes, derived from gar, meaning spear. Edgar. Edgar is a masculine name, literally meaning, prosperity spear. Goad. Goad is a stick controlling a cattle. It is derived from gar, meaning a spear. Gad. Gad is, a sharp stick for driving oxen. It is derived from gar, meaning a spear. Gua. Gua. Cucumber in English is, guo, in Chinese. As cucumbers look like a long sword, it is called, guo, in Chinese. Harvard. The surname Harvard literally means, army guard. Half is either of two equal or corresponding parts into which something can be divided. Literally, half means cutting in half with a sword. Harold. Harold is a masculine proper name, literally meaning army commander. Harry. Harry is a masculine proper name, literally meaning armed force. Herbert. Herbert is a masculine name, literally meaning army bright. It means cutting with a knife. Oscar. Oscar is a masculine proper name, literally meaning God's spear. It means cutting or severing with a sword. Vocabulary number 25. All. All is a pointed instrument for piercing small holes in leather, wood, etc. An awl is a pointed tool that is used for making small holes in leather, wood, etc. It is an essential tool for cobblers who make or repair shoes. The origin of all is unknown. But, words having similar pronunciation mean, hole. For making a hole, we need a pointed tool such as auger, awl, gimlet, etc. A stitching awl or cobbler's awl is a tool with which holes can be punctured in a variety of materials. It is also used for sewing heavy materials, such as leather or canvas. Cobbler's awls. Literally, cobbler's awls mean a set of tools that cobblers use for piercing a hole into leather. But, nowadays, when it comes to cobbler's awls, they means men's balls meaning testicles in slang, because all's pronunciation is similar to that of balls. Vocabulary number 26. On. On is a stiff bristle-like appendage of a plant such as barley, wheat, etc. Etymology. On. On is derived from Latin root ache, meaning sharp. There are many related words having this root, such as acacia, acute, acanthus, acid, acerbic, argument, ague, auger, all, etc. Definition. On is a stiff bristle, especially one of those growing from the ear or flower of barley, wheat, rye, etc. 
When awns of barley come into your clothes during threshing, you will feel bury like being pricked by a thorn, auger, awl, etc. Look at the picture of awns of barley and wheat. An awn is a stiff bristle, especially one of those growing from the ear or flower of barley, wheat, rye, and many grasses. Let's call it a day. So far, we have studied Alphabet AE Sharp series. Next time, we will start learning Alphabet AE 3. Arched series. Stay focused on this channel. See you next time. Thank you. Dedication. Above all, my deep thanks go to my Lord, who gave me so powerful and courageous spirit, without which, I couldn't write even the first line of this book. And then, to my better half, Sun Kong, who encouraged me to do what I want to do and always smiled at me, though I didn't make her enjoy a happy life with a smile on her face. Finally, to my daughters, Jimin and Ji Hyun, who gave me support, and sang a praise for me in unison, all the time. Copyright 2022 Kermijal.com, Hoyon Park. All rights reserved. No part of this book may be used or reproduced in any manner whatsoever without the written permission of the author. If you think this video is useful, please subscribe here.